We're out here today. Welcome back to another video, guys. Today's going to be a fun one. It's the Stoked Mountain Adventures Jump Clinic. Uh, make sure you guys stay tuned to this one. Going to teach you in this video how to build the perfect cheese wedge out in the mountains. <laughs> Alright guys, I seen you in the comments section below after my last video where we were sending massive errors. You guys want to know how to build a perfect jump? Well, step one, go to the nearest hardware store, get yourself a nice scoop shovel. Got this nice one here from uh, Princess Auto if you're a Canadian. Uh, if you're from America, I do not know where you're going to find one of these. But uh, step two, you're going to go into the snowbank here, build yourself a nice block. Just like that. Stack it up and then bam, brand new jump. <laughs> what I forgot to mention is you need eight friends and about an hour worth of time to get yourself to this point. Enough talking about it, let's go ride it. If you were to imagine this would just be a tabletop, forget that there's even a gap. It's not really a gap. You can land anywhere on this slope. You guys are gonna be fine. Uh, it's gonna look a little intimidating because you built it by hand, it's exposed and it's up out of the snow. But <coughs> essentially, it's just a wind lift that falls off, right? Um, it's gonna be very important to carry our speed into the jump and have our body positioning set up so that when we leave the jump and we roll off the throttle, the sled's gonna fly flat and we don't accelerate off of the, if you accelerate off of the top of the lift, you're gonna go into a sky wheelie and you're gonna have to grab a handful of brakes to get your front end to come down. So, we bring our momentum in and as we approach the, the bottom of the jump, then we'll accelerate you know, you don't want to come in like real slow. But bring your momentum with you to the jump and then drive through it. Don't uh, don't hit it like a freestyle ramp on a dirt bike where you come in like did 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 For one, it's gonna create a huge rut. For two, you're probably just gonna do a big wheelie. Um, <clears throat> so that stance that I'd like to see and that's that's typical you know jump stance for your swimming wheel, dirt bike, mountain bike, uh, scooter, whatever it is. Head and shoulders up over the bars, knees bent, right? You're gonna be neutral on the snowmobile and you're gonna come in in, a, in an attack position. And it, when I say attack position, it's meaning you're gonna lead with your head. Where you look is where you're gonna land. So you're gonna be coming in, looking well ahead, being ready for the jump to come to you. When you, when you get into the air, then you can get forward on the snowmobile so you can control it. You'll, you'll centralize your mass. And then you'll put the snowmobile exactly where you look. If you look left and you're gonna look at that tree, you're probably gonna hit it. If you're coming off of the lip and you're a little hot. So look nice and straight ahead where you wanna land the snowmobile. And um, like I say, slight bend in the knees. You don't wanna be crouching like this. Like you don't want the crouching tiger. Uh, but just a slight bend in your knees, nice square shoulders, a little bit of bend in your elbow, and just stay very aggressive over the top of the snowmobile. When you're in the air, the landing does kind of slope off a little bit. So if you if you want to match the slope angle instead of kind of going against the grain, just put some pressure into one side of the bars and maybe you don't even have to lift so much with the other one. You can put pressure into the low bar and kind of stand more pressure on your inside leg because we're on the inside of the turn right now. So you guys can see like I went actually a little bit more than halfway, but that gives me a good indication that it's not a very high speed jump. So I'm going to increase my running speed a little bit and probably not change very much different on the way that I hit the jump. I'm going to increase my speed back there, not right here. Um, I'm going to take this to the landing now. I'm going to go fairly left of where I think that you guys should. And the only reason I'm doing that is I just want to save the landing for you guys. I'm gonna kind of play with that tree a little bit, but I'll be. <laughs> even that's filming for you or whatever, always have a spotter for the landing because if this was a sunny Revelstoke day, 
There could be people riding oh, through there that don't have any idea that there's even a jump up here. So having a spotter to sort of communicate with the riders is really handy. Like I said, we're out here for the uh, Stoke Mountain Adventures Turcot Jump Clinic. We got this cheese wedge here and uh, we're going to have the first client go off it. Caden Martins, he's been in a couple of my clinics in the past and uh, he rides dirt bikes and puts a snowmobile in the air. So we'll uh, see him hit this thing. It's fun to, fun to push these guys into a little bit of the unknown. I mean, it's pretty gray bird out. Showed him a couple of tips and tricks with the limbs on the lip and the landing. And uh, now it's time to have all the fun. Yeah! <laughs> well, the boys are starting to have a session now. We just sent uh, Chris off of it. Another return client. Really rad to see him out here. He's on a 165 boost, and uh, yeah, we're just having a good session on this jump. We're uh, two for two, so we're just gonna keep the party rolling. David just sent it off of there. He went so deep, actually. I got a shot on Steve's phone. Uh, I landed right in the bottom of the V of the landing, but uh, he's all good. We gave him a little checkup, and he's just kind of chilling out. Now we got uh, Shaler line up. He's going to have his turn on it. Yeah. No, it's friggin' dumping. We got this nice jump build here. The guys are feeling comfy. They just got their first hits out of the way. It's time to have a session. I was floating. That was sick, yeah. We're here in the uh, Frisbee cabin. We're back on the clinics program. So my wife, Nikki, made me the regular, uh, what was it, ham and Swiss? I think maybe this one's actually chicken and Swiss. Uh, cooked it on the pipe, actually went on a recon mission to go find some new jumps to show these guys. Found a really sick hip jump, had a hill climb out of that hole. So, uh, I don't know, maybe 35 seconds of 8,400 RPM, and uh, this thing's looking real nice. So, we, like, it kind of starts on the small side. As I was talking to you guys earlier before, it starts on the small side, and we'll go to that that sort of knuckle landing and as we start getting more confident and the lip gets steeper we're going to be able to like get a quite a bit more pop out of it we'll be able to change the direction of the sled in the air so i'll hit it like pretty aggressively wide open because it's really deep in the belly and it's lots of uphill right um, but very low consequence which is i really like teaching this kind of stuff once you start getting the confidence you'll start hitting steeper walls and you get more pop and you can just hang even harder. But for the first little bit, let's just get confident with getting the sled off the ground and leaning into a landing that's like below us.
guys. A uh, bit of a short video today, guys. It was a uh, tough conditions out here for the uh, for the jump clinic. It has been dumping snow. The fog's in and out. We got a couple of hip jumps. Got a cheese wedge jump built, but uh, that's kind of it for the riding today. Stay tuned to the end of this video. I'm gonna go through and give you guys a walk through on my sled down at Stoke Mountain Adventures. Gonna uh, take the sled and uh, show you exactly what I've done to it for the springtime sending season. And uh, thanks for watching. All right, if you guys are seeing this, it means you made it to the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching all the way through. Very difficult conditions out there today trying to get the job done with this jump clinic here at Stoke Mountain Adventures. Um, but I figured that I would just try and add to this content and give you guys a walkthrough of my 146 9R. It's fully built up. This is the sled that I'm going to just absolutely punish for the rest of the season. So let's dive into this thing. I'll show you guys what I've done to it, why I've done it, and uh, you're gonna get an up close and personal look at the uh, 146 9R that I call my free ride machine. All right, starting from the very front of this snowmobile, I got the Backwoods BMP bumpers fitted on there. We already proved this year that those bumpers are the best in the business. Uh, they're gonna take on any tree or obstacle you put in front of them. We got the Olin shock package. It's new to me this year. They're absolutely insane. So much adjustability. Got the uh, high speed compression clickers here. Got an actual rebound clicker down on the ski shock, which is a huge bonus. And they're just very plush in the bottom, but they ramp up and provide so much dampening for those huge hits in the spring. Under the hood on the exhaust side, got the MBRP Quiet Series can. Got the QD2 drive belt on the 146. Motor wise, the sled is completely stock. Let's move up to the handlebars, talk about that for a minute. So we have the Specialty Motorsports post forward kit paired up with an inch and a quarter CFR Nux riser. It's got the Misfit bar on there, which is actually half an inch of, or half an inch of rise. And uh, it just gives me such a nice low cockpit. Uh, got the CFR signature grips on there. Of course, I got them wired on. I believe 100% in wiring my grips. I don't ever glue my grips. Look at how far forward that steering post brings you up onto the snowmobile. The existing steering post used to come out right there. Uh, continuing back, we got a Rock Speed FX seat cover on this custom made grab seat. I made this grab seat uh, before my last video. Um, it's just honestly a chunk of pipe in here that's riveted to the seat base. It's riveted to the seat base and uh, it just allows me to get my hands in there, grab on. It's strapped on so it doesn't go flying off. And then we got the uh, Rock Speed FX Versa Grip. Uh, it's just rubber, little rubber nubs that are on the side of the tunnel. They're stuck to the side of the tunnel and uh, really just keeps you glued to the snowmobile when you're flying through the air with it. Down into the skid frame, you'll see more Olin Swedish Gold inside of there. We've got the Backwoods BMP rail braces. Nothing worse than having to take a sled out of the backcountry with bent rails. And uh, having those rail braces is very key this time of the year. Going around the back, got the scoop shovel. That just helps with making the jumps uh, stack up a lot faster than just trying to use your avalanche shovel. This side of the sled, we'll dive in. In the clutches, I got the Ibex clutch kit in there. Got the the uh, primary spring, primary weights, secondary spring, and a secondary helix. This sled is actually the most insane backcountry build that I've ever done. And it is very close to being stock. Um, huge shout out to Polaris for making an incredible machine. Olin suspension. Um, this Arctic FX wrap is absolutely popping this year too. So really stoked on that. And uh, Got to give a shout out to all my sponsors, Ella Motorsports, 509, 
Zollinger Racing Products, Backwoods BMP, MBRP, Caliber, RMR Suspensions, CFR, Rock Speed FX. You guys really nailed it on this entire build. Thank you very much. Thank you.